The MMA Discussion Podcast is brought to you by SportsofAnarchy.com. Visit our site for all your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by SubmissionFC.com. Enter the promo code SportsofAnarchy10 for 10% off the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gear. We're also brought to you by the Flex Belt. With summer approaching fast, you want to strengthen and tone your abs, the Flex Belt, which is FDA cleared, might just be for you. Follow the link in the description below to get your very own. And the MMA Discussion Podcast is now available to listen to on iTunes and the radio podcast app Stitcher. Both available for free on all smartphone devices. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 32nd episode of the MMA Discussion Podcast, and we are very happy to bring to you with our special guest, Ryan Couture. How are you doing, Mr. Couture? Doing great, thanks. Of course, here with my uh, co-host, Chris. Chris, see you. Hey. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Very excited to have you on, Ryan. Um, we wanted to get you on uh, as quickly as we could after that. Very, very uh, spectacular performance at Bellator 135. I uh, wanted to ask you um, what you thought of, of your own performance and uh, basically give your own assessment on that. I was uh, really, really happy with how the fight worked out. Um, expected a, a, a war out of that one. Uh, I know uh, Dakota's a very tough guy, and, and I thought for sure we'd be going into the, into the later part of the fight if, if I was going to be able to uh, finish him at all. Um, expected a hard-fought decision possibly as well, so... To go in and get him out of there in the first round was I, I was thrilled with that. Um, felt like uh, pretty much everything went according to plan. Obviously, getting taken down uh, is never exactly ideal, but but it did exactly what we trained to do from that point and, and uh, found my way to the the position I was looking for and got the finish. Well, you're two wins in now in Bellator, and uh, I just wanted to ask, how did the uh, the deal with Bellator come to? Uh, come across you um after fighting for battlegrounds a couple of times after the your ufc stint uh yeah i got those two uh two uh fights in battlegrounds and, and kind of got back up on the horse and, and uh then uh when the uh, management change came about and, and scott my coker stepped and took over bellator uh i had a good relationship with him from back in my strike force days so it was just a natural fit to to start working on a deal with him and, and uh my manager did a great job. I'm very happy with what we were able to work out and, and uh, just feeling great so far. Uh, just keeping the momentum going to, on the now four wins straight overall and two with Bellator. I'm stoked. Yeah, man. Um, you have in your last four fights, actually, speaking of that, they all came by rear naked choke, three in the first round, one in the second. Is that usually your go to move in the gym or are they just coming to you in the fight? Um, yeah, that uh, back control and. and uh, you know, taking the back and controlling from there and, and finishing with that rear naked choke is definitely a go-to for me in the gym. And, um, you know, I spent a lot of time there in training, uh, driving my training partners nuts. So it's been nice to have that uh, pay off and, and to be able to do it in these last couple of fights. They're, they're always more fun when it goes that way. I wanted to ask you too, um, it, it seems more so that you're uh, submission savvy than you are anything else uh, being your striking or uh, or even your wrestling is that like did you you know growing up starting before you even got into MMA was 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 jiu-jitsu more of a like did you favor jiu-jitsu over wrestling more so than any other uh, style or which was it uh, I wrestled uh, in junior high and high school and then uh, took a few years off of being athletic or even really taking care of myself in college and just kind of got fat and had a good time and uh, <laughs> started getting back in shape after I graduated. Jiu-Jitsu was kind of one of the first things I found my way into that, that uh, I just took on as a hobby. I'd always been interested in it from watching MMA and, and uh, felt like it was similar enough to wrestling that I had a good time with it, but it wasn't nearly the same, you know, kind of grind and intensity that, you know, I, I wasn't looking to train that hard really at that time. So um, that was kind of my gateway in MMA was, was, uh, jujitsu and, and it just came natural naturally to me from the beginning. And, and I've always kind of favored it, I think just cause it's where I'm most comfortable now. Cool. Um, why did you actually stop wrestling in college? What did you, were you able to, did you have opportunities to wrestle there or you just didn't want to? Um, I, I think I could have gone to, there were a couple of community colleges that expressed interest in having me come out and wrestle for them, but, um, I, I just really wasn't feeling it. And, and decided to go to the school I really wanted to go to, and I had a bunch of friends going to, and, and focus on that instead. And really, at that point, never saw myself even as possibly having a career in, in any kind of sport, let alone fighting professionally. So, 
you know, I kind of felt like my athletic days were behind me and I was just going to go to school and then get a job and, and whatever. And somehow, uh, uh, ended up taking a weird roundabout course back to, to get to do this. Yeah, you did start your uh, your MMA career a little late. I believe you were, what, 27, 28 when you first started getting in there? Yeah, my first amateur fight was in 2008, so that would have been... Seven years I'm, ago, 25? Yeah, I was 25, and then, so I was amateur for two years, so I would have been, I, I guess, 27 when I had my first pro fight. So definitely... Uh, not the ideal age to be starting in the sport, especially these days. Everybody seems to be getting younger and more athletic, um, but I'm making the most of it and having a good time with the process. Well, what caused that transition from you to finally go from what you were doing um, after school to MMA? Uh, when I graduated college, I wanted to stay in the in uh, Bellingham, the, the town where I had been in school. I really loved it there. Um, so I just went out and got uh, whatever job I could. I ended up working in the bank for a while, and that was fine. I, I didn't uh, you know, didn't have any particular passion for it, but it was good for me at the time. Um, but uh, a few years into that, I had started, you know, taking better care of myself and gotten pretty into to grappling, and was starting to learn a little bit of kickboxing. And uh, got a call from my dad that was uh, saying that the gym was expanding and, and really doing well, and they, they were going to need to hire some more help and he thought that I might be interested, so um, I jumped on that, that opportunity to get involved with the family business and, and made the move to Vegas. And once I got here and, and, and was around, you know, top level fighters uh, day in and day out, it really inspired me to take my train to the next level and, and uh, got that itch to try out an amateur fight. And the first time I got in the ring and competed, I was hooked. Yeah, man. Um, looking back, I'm just looking at your record right now. I see. I mean, you beat some pretty big names back in Strike Force. You had a win over a guy like Conor Yu and uh, KJ Nunes, and then you got into the UFC. And as we know, things didn't go your way. You went on to there. And then, I mean, now you're on a four fight winning streak, and you've looked really damn impressive. Do you think you're on the road back to the UFC, or do you want to go back there, or are you happy in Bellator right now? I'm very happy in Bellator. I'm, I'm trying to get on the road to that uh, Bellator title. That's, uh, that's my goal now. Um, you know, things didn't pan out in the UFC. I had a couple of poor showings, and, and uh, that bums me out. But but uh, I'm very happy with where I've ended up as a result, and, and I wouldn't change anything. I have a question about your your, your training partners. Ma mainly, like you know, um, when you first got there, um, and and now, are there still similar training partners there, like a like uh, say Tyson Griffin or Campman or Dunham or Sadala? Um, are those guys still around? And, and if and if so, or if not, who do you train with these days? That really uh, that 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 has shown because you've shown great improvement. And so, what do you attribute that most to uh, in the gym these days? Um, and I, I think uh, a lot of that core group, uh, a lot of those names you mentioned, kind of went their went their separate ways for a while. Some of them have come back. Um, you know, until recently, until he opened his own gym that conflicts with the schedule. Uh, Evan Dunham was, was there. I got a lot of good training in with him and, and really learned a lot from getting to work with him. Uh, Graham Maynard just came back, and, and uh, he fought a week after I did, so we trained a lot together leading up to those fights. and That was really cool for me to, to get to work so close. He was someone that I looked up to so much when I first moved out here and, and was first starting out, um, and to kind of get to test uh, – you know, test my progress and what the, the years in between when I trained with him originally and, and now, um, how, how much, uh, I have grown and improved, um, you know, and, and, uh, even the guys that, that aren't coming around anymore, like Martin and Tyson, um, I learned a lot from over the course of the time that I did get to spend training with them. So I've had, had a lot of really great opportunities and great training partners over the years at Extreme Couture. The team's really, uh, really got a lot of momentum going. We've got a ton of, ton of new and up, up and coming guys coming in, and along with some of the established guys that are still around and and, uh, and have come back. And, and it's just been an awesome vibe and, and fantastic training for the last uh, year and a half, two years there. Do you do you see um, the the fact that you're now two fights into Bellator, you fought twice for the UFC? What's the difference being uh, between both promotions uh, at this stage in your career thus far? Uh, they, they both run a tight ship and, and are very professional. Um, I do feel like I see a lot more uh, 
you know, kind of smiling and laughing and people just having a good time with the, the Bellator crew. They, they know, they know how to have fun and they love their jobs. And, and that's, that's been really cool to see. It's, it's a nice laid back atmosphere. They're all just happy to be to get to do something that they love so much. And, and it, I think comes across in, in the whole experience from start to finish for the, for the fighters and, and the quality of the shows that they're putting on. Did you feel like, um, cause there's a lot of, you know, rumors thrown around. You never know what could be true or what could not be true. There was a lot of, I guess, animosity between Dana White and your dad, uh, Randy Couture. Um, was it true? Is there any truth to um, the UFC not allowing uh, Randy to be in your corner? Yeah, that was true. Dana called me up personally and told me they were happy to have me and the UFC was my home. But but that uh, obviously everyone knew he and my dad weren't getting along and, and uh, he said they never would be again and that and the dad wasn't welcome in the building for any of their events. Um, he, he gave me that heads up up front so I knew before I ever signed my first fight with them that that was going to be the case. And, and we went out there and, and, and tried to get it done anyway and unfortunately came up short. Did yeah, you that, feel? Did you feel at all that that hindered your your uh you out there in in your two performances with the UFC? Um, I mean, it definitely sucks. Uh, he he's always one of my main cornermen, and and he's the voice that I have the easiest time picking out of the crowd. Obviously, having listened to it my whole life makes it easier for me to key in on on his instructions. He's just got a very calming presence about him. Um, so it, it definitely was a factor, but, but there was a lot going into those fights that I could have done better, I think, to prepare, and you know, it just wasn't ideal, and I, I learned from it. Uh, you know, my biggest gripe about all that would have been just the extra drama, or the, that extra air of people talking about stuff that had nothing to do with the fight leading up to it, it was, was frustrating, but, um, you know, beyond that, it is what it is, I still had to get in there and put in the work, and, and training camps maybe weren't ideal, and, and uh, my performances definitely showed it, so, um, it was a bummer, but it's something that I've learned from, and I think uh, I'm in a much better place now. Yeah, for sure. Um, just um, about that. Yeah, it's a little. It was just a bit of a weird situation. Usually, they don't let that kind of stuff outside of the fight affect stuff inside of the fights. Usually, with the UFC, do you think that may have affected you getting released after your two losses, or do you think it was completely just on the fact that you lost the two fights you had in the UFC? Um, yeah, I think uh, it's pretty pretty much standard if you show up and go 0-2 and, and just don't perform in the UFC that you get your walking papers. So I wasn't surprised by that at all. And I don't think uh, I don't think that had anything to do with, with the animosity between uh, Dana and Dad. I think uh, you know if I had showed up and fought better, then they would have kept me around. But uh, I'm sure uh, I wasn't expecting to get any special treatment or any special favors uh, given the circumstances. But I don't think that I got an unfair shake either. Yeah, I hear you. What did you feel when getting when when fight? Well, first of all, you won four straight since coming off uh, your UFC stint. Do, you, do are you taking uh, your career more seriously, like in the sense that you're tr you're really trying to make something for yourself here in Bellator, a big name, a new promotion? You're with Scott Coker, a familiar face. Uh, do you feel like you're, you're really reaching your 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 prime state in your career? Yeah, I really have a lot of confidence growing and, and uh, good momentum, and, and I'm very happy with, with my training situation, my coaching setup, um, the promoter. Everything is just falling into place, and I feel like I'm ready to really make a run and, and uh, try and do some big things over this next year or two. Is there anyone um, out there in Bellator specifically that you'd like to fight next? Anyone you have your eye on? Uh, no, not anybody specifically. Just uh, I know it's going to be another another tough opponent, another step up the ladder, and, and I'm looking forward to finding out what challenge I have uh, coming up. With that, I, uh, I was about to ask, like, do you know uh, when you'd be fighting again? If, if so, who? Uh, Scott said at the event after after the last fight that they'd get me back in soon, but I haven't heard any details yet. Um, I, ideally for me would be maybe June or July sometime this summer. There'd be plenty of time to get ready and, and uh, get fired up to fight again. So I've uh, just got to start uh, – putting the word out there to him that, that I'm ready to, to nail something down and hopefully it'll happen quick. Do you have any uh, timetable in your head when you want to look for that title shot if you're able to keep the wins going? Um, I think if I could string together another another two wins this year and maybe one early next year that I'd be right there uh, 
right there, possibly getting that, that title shot sometime mid next year if, if everything went perfect according to plan. Yeah, you spoke more on – well, actually, this is your interview, of course, but one thing that your dad, Mr. Couture, said was – that you know he uh his thoughts on unionizing uh fighters uh i just wanted to quickly get what were your thoughts on that um I, I think obviously it's something that that would be good for for all of us but uh logistically i just can't see it ever really happening getting getting so many uh people who are all so used to just fending for themselves to all come together and, and really organize like that is seems like a stretch to me but it's possible sometime uh, down the line so some people will get together and really rally everybody up and get it done uh, but, but I wouldn't hold my breath yeah it seems like if it happens it's going to be a long way down the road yeah I don't think we're anywhere near something like that right now I wanted to also ask like uh, with your with what's what I perceive as improvement, what, what do you attribute that most to, and like what new guys are there training at Extreme Couture these days that um, you could speak on in that improvement? Um, I think a big part of it is uh, it's uh, our new head coach, uh, or coaches, I should say, uh, Rob Ross and Dennis Davis. They make a great team, and they both are always on the same page and and do a good job of, of keeping us focused and. You know, I've had a tendency in the past, I think, to kind of get off on tangents of training something that's kind of outside of what works best for my game plan uh, ends up being more fun. Then I'll spend a lot of time on something that doesn't necessarily pay off on fight night. So they've done a really good job uh, getting me to, to focus on my strengths and, and shoring up the, the holes in my game and, and really just staying uh, always working on, on stuff that's going to be effective come fight night rather than kind of doing what's most fun. Uh, so I think that's a big part of it is really – kind of shifted my mentality towards playing on my strengths and it's why I've been able to steer these last four fights to where I'm best and, and get those finishes that I've gotten. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to continuing down that path and I think it's only going to make me better uh, long term. Awesome. And um, yeah, I have my, just my last question. Um, but it does kind of pertain to the question itself. Um, do you have you ever felt like obviously your dad's a huge star? He was with the UFC, UFC champion, UFC Hall of Famer. He's been movies. Everyone knows who the guy is. Have you ever felt like you've been in your dad's shadow? And uh, I mean, if so, how do you handle that? How have you gotten used to it? If you feel that way. Um, I mean, I think a lot of people who don't even have our have my our last name are kind of in dad's shadow. He's just such a huge figure in MMA that that uh, it'd be impossible not to be. But but I knew what I was in for before I ever had my first amateur fight. So it doesn't really phase me. It's, you know, I, I respect the hell out of everything he, did, he accomplished. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm proud to be associated with that and, and uh, makes it easy to, to talk about all the time and, and to answer questions about it. It really doesn't uh, hold me back at all. It's, it's opened a lot of doors for me. And he's been a huge help and a great support as I've uh, gone down that same path. And, and uh you know, on the whole, the benefits far away any any kind of perceived uh, hassles that come along with it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. It's good that you look at it in a positive way instead of like some people might take it in a negative context. Especially if you know. Yeah, I mean. Oh, go ahead, Miss. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, it, a lot of people might be bitter about it or about it, but that's just not constructive and. and I don't think uh, accounts for the whole picture, and it would be kind of self-centered, I think, of me to, to look at it that way. I think on the whole it's a very positive thing, and it's it's given me a ton of opportunities, and, and I'm very thankful for that. Well, yeah, with, with it, I think, also, too, is like, you know, you get all these eyes on you because of, of, of who you are, because of who your dad is. And, you know, being on a different stage in Bellator and being able to, um, um, you know, really – make a name for yourself somewhere else and really sh and take all those eyes and really make, you know, make it your own. That's actually a question we have from one of our fans. If you're down to uh, answer some fan questions right now. Yeah. Sure. First one is actually from our own uh, JP, one of our own uh, admins of a page that we run. He asked, um, do you believe that you can become for Bellator what Randy became for the UFC? Uh, I, I don't know that anybody can become, what he became, uh, just because the the sport's so different now and the circumstances are so different, uh, it's, it's just a different time in MMA. Um, but I absolutely think I'm capable of becoming a champion, and, and uh, that's uh, as much as I aspire to. I don't really think beyond that. Uh, 
I, I don't know that anybody will ever be able to have the impact he had again, uh, just because it's such a different landscape now. Um, another question from Ariel uh, Nunez asking, what do you see in the next five years uh, perceive your career? Do you feel that you'll be retired, continue being champion? What do you see yourself in the next five years in MMA? I think it depends heavily on how the next two years go. You know, uh, if, right. if I can string some wins together and, and get in that title picture next year, and, and uh, you know, if I'm able to, to take that belt, then I'll keep going as long as I can hold on to it. But... You know, if things don't work out well, then it might be time to start thinking about moving on to something else. Good, question. good answer. I actually like this next question. Do you? How do you uh, feel you match up against other stars like Michael Chandler, Will Brooks, Dave Jensen, two of which will be fighting for the lightweight belt this uh, Friday? Um, how do you feel you match up to them now? Uh, this is all incredibly tough fights for, for anyone. You know, it would be a huge challenge to get in there with any of those guys. Uh, Jansen and Chandler obviously are, are more uh, grappling dominant guys, and especially Michael Chandler's wrestling, I think, would give me a lot of trouble. I'd have to really train hard to, to figure out how to cope with that. Um, and then uh, Will Brooks is just such an explosive athlete. He's got dangerous striking that, that uh, you know, figuring out how to close the distance and, and keep the fight in my range would be a real challenge. So uh, I look forward to continuing to work and improve and eventually finding out how I'll do against all three of those guys. Awesome. Uh, we have one question from Twitter. Uh, I got most of these are from Facebook. One question from Twitter asks, um, "Do you ever see yourself competing outside of Bellator? And if so, do you have any interest in returning to the UFC?" I think we kind of answered that one, but go ahead and speak on it more if you need to. Uh, I'm I'm really happy where I'm at with Bellator, and, and uh, everything goes according to my plan. That's where I'm going to finish my career. Awesome. Um, another Facebook question coming from Nathan Sturma asks, how do you see uh, Scott Cooker as opposed to uh, your other promotional bosses? Uh, very, very different styles. Uh, you know, Scott's just very, very uh, fighter oriented, I think understands exactly what we go to and, and uh, seems to kind of, I don't know, check that, that, sort of need to be the boss and the, the kind of ego that Dana brings with him everywhere he goes. Uh, Scott leaves that behind and is just very affable and very friendly and easy to work with. And he, it just really comes across that he cares about all the fighters and, and wants the best for us. It makes him very, very pleasurable to work with. We actually got one from a Kevin Galbraith just right now. I got messages. That was supposed to be the last one. This one he asked, what is the uh, and this one might be a tough one. <laughs> he asked, um, "What is the drug testing situation at Bellator, and do you feel that they do a good job?" Um, I think it, it varies from commission to commission, and, and typically the commissions are the ones in charge of it. I think, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the new management, they're going to really start to focus on that more. It, it, I see more or, uh, in, the, in the media about them making that a focus and, and starting to do you know, the random pre-fight testing as well. So I think it's headed in the right direction, but there's always room for improvement. Um, I think we've seen over the last few years that that the performance-enhancing drugs are a huge problem in the sport as a whole, and, and uh, it's nice to see the promotions finally taking steps to try and uh, get that under wraps and, and get it under control. Well, that's awesome. That's a awesome. You know, Yeah, for us, definitely, especially, it's definitely a big topic as that we talk about a lot of these days, especially because of the year that it's been. Um, yeah. You know, and with that, I think that's the end of our fan questions. We've asked all that we can. You've been an awesome guest, and um, you know, we we would love to have you on again, especially when you we know when your next fight is. Um, I know you're not calling anybody out, but there's a lot of exciting matchups for you, and you seem to have, uh, have really stepped up your game. You seem to be at a really prime position in your career to where you could easily be on a title run right now, and. Uh, of course, many other fans can't wait to see what, uh, what comes of you and uh, in this promotion. And again, we'd love to have you on another time, yeah? Yeah, I'd be happy to come back anytime. Uh, and I'll be getting the word out on uh, Twitter and Facebook as soon as I know something about a fight. So, Yeah, man. Um, thank you again for coming on. We really do appreciate it a lot. And uh, where can people find you on social media, on Facebook and Twitter and all that? Uh, I got my, my Facebook uh, fan page, just Ryan Couture, and then uh, on Twitter and Instagram, Ryan D. Couture. Uh, people keep up, keep up with me there. I don't always do a great job of updating, but I'm trying to be better. <laughs> nice. Nice. We wish you all the best of luck in your upcoming fights, man. Thanks again. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one, Ryan. Thank you so much. You too. Take care. Take care. 
And that was Ryan Couture, the son of UFC Hall of Famer Randy Couture, and we appreciate his time. And, and uh, wow, that was a great interview. He's pretty laid back. I was a uh, yeah, man. He was really fun to talk to. Yeah, he gave us some uh, great answers. Appreciate the time, and uh, yeah, can't wait to have him back on. Uh, we'll move on now, and we got our admin Jonas. Jonas, are you on now? Yes, I All am right. here, and I hate that I had to miss the uh, interview with Ryan, but you know. Got to pay bills somehow, so uh, <laughs> I hope Nick asked you the question I asked him to ask you. Oh, yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, we did yours was the first question I, I asked him. I feel like I was there then, you know? I to make sure <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, man, we got a lot to talk about. Um, first of all, there's been a few matchups that have been announced that's, uh, that are yeah. exciting. There are three cards coming from the top three uh, MMA promotions, World Series of Fighting, Bellator, UFC, all have cards this weekend. Um, they all look. They all have something to offer. Uh, according yeah, to me, the UFC is by far the worst of the three. I, you know what? It could, it could marry. It, it certainly isn't the most prolific card on uh, of the weekend. I'll agree with no, you it there. Sucks. Uh, okay. <laughs> 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 all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Fine. All right. Cool. I'll <laughs> let you say. It. No, it's fine. I usually I get all mad when you say stupid shit like that, but whatever. It's cool. It's not stupid. It's true. It's not even true to me. I'm just okay. Fine. It's it's your thoughts, not my thoughts. Nothing like, seems to be true to you. I, no. Yeah. Exactly. But that's why I have you on. You know, trying to keep you in check and vice versa. But I'm failing, obviously. <laughs> well, that's we got. Different. We'll go over the first one. Which one should we go over first? World Series or Bellator? Um. Yeah, I say we just go UFC first and just get it. <laughs> We go through like all right, all right, no, that's cool. Well, first of all, I mean, uh, the World Series, or I mean, the UFC is going to Poland for the first time in their, uh, in their, I think, uh, in UFC history. That's and probably I, uh, the most interesting thing about this card. <laughs> well, to me, it's it certainly comes at a good time. You know, the fact that they just crowned a new Polish champion really works oh, out. Oh yeah, for them. definitely. That certainly worked out in their benefit for Joanna Jacek to have won the title off of. Um, um, oh my god, I can't remember her name right now. The Cookie Monster. Uh, Sparza. Yeah, Sparza. Brain fart there. But yeah, for her to have won the belt right off of her a month prior, that that certainly benefits them a lot. And of course, it's being headlined with a rematch that um, I certainly didn't think we'd ever see, but we're going to get it. And um, I, I actually am interested in this only uh, in the main event, Crow Cop and Zaga, strictly just because I want to see where Crow Cop's at. You know, I mean, he had a real good thing, possibly if he could, if he would have gone to Bellator, um, but he took the UFC instead, and that makes me question, in a good way, his mindset. Like, where's he at? Like, what's he thinking? Like, what 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 does he hope to achieve while he goes out there? And um, you know, we'll just go with the main card. And you know, the the preliminary card is a lot of guys making their um, debuts, and uh, you know, good luck to all of them. And, and we'll certainly be watching. At least I will. I don't know about Chris. <laughs> um, no, I'm not. I'm not watching the prelims. All right, I'll I watch the prelims. Know, I'll I'll watch the prelims. I'll relay back to you how how it goes. And if yeah, I mean, I'll I'll check the results and everything, but I'm not watching those. Things. I know, but I'll let you know how the fights go. Uh, I'll definitely check out maybe the main card. The main card looks all right, you know. I mean, I mean with the exception yeah, of the welterweight know. matchup on there, the main card looks all right. First of all, you got Joanna Calderwood uh, coming in, who's going to make her uh, fighting the debuting uh, Marina Morose. Yeah, see, uh, I don't know who that girl is, but no, she's making her debut. Seven. That's probably Calderwood's yeah. fun to fight. Well, I'm say that again. Call. I said she's fun to fight. I meant uh, Calderwood is fun to watch. She's fun to fight. <laughs> yeah. She's definitely a, a a good a, a great fighter in her own. Still undefeated technically, and um, you know had a great fight her first showing against uh, C. O. Heham, um, and so uh, I'm excited to see her get in there and then really shake up the 115 division. Any 115 pounders that fight these days, I'm excited for because that division is like wide open and in a good way, you know, because there's all kinds of competition. Um, you know, any one good performance can really get you that title shot because it isn't really clear who gets the next shot at Joanna Janjic. And uh, for a, a lady like Calderwood to be coming in here in her uh, home country, and maybe even you know if she gets like a knockout or so, she could. I'm willing to bet that Joanna will probably be uh, in attendance. In which case, it'd be cool if she like you know calls her out right then and there. Um, 
M Mar uh, what is it? Uh, Marina Morose is actually a uh, European grappler, so it really kind of plays against uh, Calderwood's style. So um, she has a lot of European uh, accolades as far as grappling goes in jiu-jitsu and, and even uh, submission wrestling. So uh depends on if she can get Calderwood to the ground. I guess that's like the number one thing. If she can get Calderwood oh, yeah, to the definitely. ground, yeah, I that's mean, that's my number I'm, one thing. Go ahead. I'm looking at her sure dog right now and she has five finishes and four of them are by arm bar. So Yeah. See? We gotta look out for the arm bar. If she can get it to the ground, I can see her winning. But I mean I'm gonna favor Calderwood because she's beaten five girls I've never heard of in organizations I've never heard of, so well, yeah, she's always. I don't. I don't believe this chick has ever fought. Yeah, has she fought in the U.S.? No, I don't think so. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, uh, I mean, she still hasn't. But you know, Calderwood yeah. is a, certainly a step up from any uh, other competitor that she's faced thus far. So. Oh yeah, by far, and I'm pretty sure. I mean, there's a reason the UFC signed her, but um, I'm thinking I'm definitely gonna go with Calderwood here. Jonas, what do you think? Off of what you know. <laughs> yeah, based off what I know, JoJo's uh, pretty damn good. So. I'll go with JoJo Calderwood. Yeah, I I heard that she might have changed her name to Mofo JoJo, which is pretty funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like she posted a thing that said uh, "One Tough Mofo JoJo" uh, and like made a shirt out of it. So I don't know if that's her nickname, but <laughs> that'd be interesting. I was I wouldn't even mind. Um, but with that being said, I, I look forward to the opener on the main card and then move to the welterweight fight. Who I know I know about Sheldon Westcott. Yeah, me too. I don't know who uh, the other guy is. Powell pa Pollock? Pa I'll go with Powell Pollock. How about that? Maybe that's what it is. Um, uh, yeah, I was looking at uh, Powell Pollock's. Uh, uh, it's loading. Give me a sec. Unless you yeah, have yours already. Yeah, I'm up right now. He's 10-1 and one and he lost his – most recent fight, which was his UFC debut against Peter Sabata by unanimous decision. What card was that? Munoz Musasi card, but I don't remember watching him fight. So. Oh yeah, that was last year. That was a while ago. He must have been injured or something. And then yeah, and uh, what's his name? Westcott still hasn't fought since. I mean, he hasn't fought since he lost to Elias Theodoro in the Ultimate Fighter finale yeah. in April of 2014. Yeah, as I was so, about yeah. to say, coming off the tough house, so. It is very interesting that they're on the main card, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess this guy's probably Polish, but Westcott maybe I don't know. Not what? Westcott, uh, uh Powell. Powell. Yeah, yeah. Powell. Powell. It's Pavel. You, say it. you say it. Go ahead. It's Pavel. It's with a W. Yeah, got you. No, not here. I'm I am excited for uh well for beyond what uh beyond what this fight is uh it should uh, it, it I'll, I'll let it surprise me I don't know too much about either guy um I, I've seen Sheldon fight multiple times so I mean I figure what I can expect from him from his opponent I'm not too sure I figure I'll just let that fight surprise me you know what I mean or not yeah. let, let, let there be any expect expectations so we'll just move on to the co-main event which yeah, I am very yeah. excited for um because uh you know Jimmy Manoa taking on um Jan Blauchich. I don't know how you say that, but um, I, he he's been a guy that I've been expecting to see in the UFC for a while, um, and uh, you know he's a uh, he's he had a great career uh, outside of the UFC before making his debut against Ilir Fatifi Latifi I'm sorry uh, last year, and sure enough he came in and he had delivered uh, was able to knock Latifi out um, and uh, was able to get the win in, in his debut, and he's uh, if you look at his record he's 18 and uh, something what is he 18 and three. Um, and, uh, yes. yeah, I mean, he's just, he's had a, he, he has a great career, uh, outside. He has a lot of submissions. He's got a very, a lot of various finishes and he's been a guy that, uh, you know, one of those guys at the UFC should have been signing a while back. So yeah, he's, he's very, very exciting to watch. Say that again. He's very well rounded. And he has, yeah, uh, exactly. Wins over some impressive names. Yeah, definitely. And, um. Uh, you know, so he's very – this should be interesting. Jimmy Manuel has definitely showed that he's a great striker, although he has lost in that department. So, I mean, uh, it's it's time to see if he can take on a guy who's really well-wound, if he can handle himself on the ground or if he can, you know, avoid going there if he still isn't. You know, but with a guy like this who's a heavy uh, heavy grappler heavy uh, and uh, and a really good, decent striker, well, I, I figure we'll probably see fight of the night out of this one. I think so because Jan has always put on a, uh, exciting fights. I've seen a lot of his fights with KSW, which is the promotion he fights for out there in Poland. So 
you know, and he was, the, and he's been their champ for like years now, I think for like four or five. So, um, uh, I'm excited. I can't wait to see it. And, uh, what, Jonas, what do you think? Um, I like, uh, what was that Blakovich? Yeah, Blakovich we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like him. I like that fight. Um, you know, I, I, I'm just overall, I'm glad that the uh, UFC is giving uh, these Polish guys a chance to show what they can do. I'm not expecting a whole lot um, overall to be wild, but you know, sometimes the uh, least uh, impressive cards on paper end up being the most exciting cards to watch just because of uh, how little we know about him. So I do know a little bit about Jan Blakowicz, and he's he's been a pretty steady competitor. I don't know. Nobody's going to put him anywhere, you know, close to the top of the rankings, but uh, he can do, he can fight, so I, I'm excited to see him fight. I want to see him fight in the U.S. after this fight. I mean, I know he's got a visa to the U.S., so I would like to see him fight in the U.S. Uh, um, if he wins this fight, especially against a high uh, high profile like Jimmy Manoa, especially in the, uh, in the country that he's fighting him in. Um and yeah, I, expect, I me, I got, I got Jan. I think he, I think Bakovich wins this, and uh, I think we see him next in the United States where he can get more uh, exposure. Chris, uh, yeah, um, it, I mean, this fight definitely has potential to be a fight of the night candidate, and I mean, yeah, we, we like we're saying there, it could be an exciting card, but there's a big difference between an exciting card and a good card. There haven't really been, I mean, we we haven't seen too many good cards. Uh, I don't know what the hell I'm saying. I got a little tongue tied there, but uh, just going <laughs> for the fight. Uh, I think if I don't know too much about Jan, but if he can get the takedown, he probably win this fight. And then um, I mean, Manuel doesn't have bad defense, and those leg kicks are vicious. So um, I'm gonna go with Manuel just because I know more about him, and I I think he'll get it done. Use those leg kicks to slow Blackwitch down. Side note, Chris, you're going down this weekend. All right, we'll keep going. Uh, main event uh, is Mirko Krokop versus Gabriel Gonzaga, and I, I'm huh, I'll let I'll let you guys go first before I comment on what it is I expect from this fight. Chris, go ahead. Um, yeah, I think these are two guys. Obviously, they're both. Uh, it's a big name fight, and I think they're both pretty far past their prime at this point. In the first fight, uh, Gonzaga upset Krokop, which and Krokop was big people. We thought he was going to go on to be UFC champion, thought he was unstoppable and all that. Gonzaga came in there and beat him. And uh, I expect this fight to be the same. I think Gonzaga's going to get another win. I don't think it's going to be anything. I mean, he can get a knockout, but I don't think it's going to be anything overly impressive, especially against a guy who's the age of Mirko Krokop at this point. And, um,. Yeah, I don't have too much else to say about that. It's not going to be as impressive as his first one, which was a head kick knockout. It doesn't really get much more impressive than that. And I think he'll beat a 40-year-old Miracle Crow Cop, but I don't think that means too much at this point. Jones? Yeah, I got Gonzaga winning. Um, and for the same reasons that Chris does, uh, the game's pretty much passed uh, Crow Cop by. Uh He's still going to be, you know, a guy to watch and a guy to respect for all that he's done for the sport. But this isn't the same Crow Cop that, uh, <clears throat> this isn't even the same Crow Cop that lost to Gonzaga the first time they fought in the UFC. So I don't see how Crow Cop can improve or uh, show that he's better now than he was before he uh, lost to Gonzaga oh, so many years ago. So Gonzaga pretty easily has this one, in my opinion. I actually disagree. I want to. I. I mean, Gonzaga is. I mean, I agree with you on that. They're probably past the prime. That's probably the case. But you know, I. I want to believe that. I think I'm one of the very few that want to believe this. But I want to believe that Crow Cop is probably going to go in there more determined to really show that age isn't a factor for him right now. There have been guys that have been able to really, you know, break a great streak in their career at the time when they're, um, you know, at this, at this, at this time. And um, and so for me, I think that it's uh, well. I'm trying to think about it, but for me, I think it's um. I don't know. I expect to see Krokop probably go in there and get a finish. I really do. I think why would he go to the UFC when he had an opportunity with Bellator, and why why would he, you know, 
I, I think the competition was probably easier for him to contend with in Bellator. But, you know, if he wants to come to the UFC, I want to believe it's because he, he believes in himself and is going to be able to get something done in the UFC. So with that being said, I think he probably gets a win. It might go all the way to the judges, in which case I know that might not excite you, Chris. But I think with that, I think he might probably get a decision win. Dude, I mean, if it goes to the judges, if the fight's good, the fight's good. I just think these are two guys past their prime, and I don't think this fight means all that much for either one of them in their retrospect to their careers. They've yeah, at this, at this point in point, time, certainly, yeah. I mean, at this point in time. I mean, yeah, they've done a lot at this point. They both obviously have earned our respect from their past fights, but I don't think they're going to have much. I don't think they have much left to offer in terms of the top of the division. Cool. Well, with that being said, that is UFC Fight Night 64. That was the main card that we went over going down this Saturday. Time frame is, I am still unaware, but I believe it will be early or early afternoon, late morning time. Uh, probably early morning, actually, for the prelims with how, with how many that there are. <laughs> um, you know, So the main card will probably start late morning, early afternoon. Uh, on, on, available only on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, and I can't wait to watch it. I'm going to have a good time with it, I think. And then so we'll move on to the next fight cards that are going down this Friday, April 10th. Bellator World Series of Fighting, what's up first? What's up? What's up first? Bellator or World Series of Fighting? Let's go with World Series of Fighting. I actually think World uh, Bellator 136 deserves the most attention. So with that, we'll right. give World Series yeah, I agree. Of, yeah, we'll give World Series of Fighting the next attention. But I am actually excited for what this card has to offer. First of all, I'm very surprised with the quick, uh, with the quick signing, the quick fight. Uh, Phoenix Jones fighting April 10th. Making his debut for World Series of Fighting, he'll be taking on Emmanuel uh, Wallow. Now, Wallow, I have uh, haven't heard too much. Actually, I had a thing on him real quick. Let me pull that up. Dude, um, uh, while you're looking that up, I think it's absolutely hysterical that World Series of Fighting has Ben Fodor down as Phoenix Jones is ha and have him a picture of him in his suit. Yeah, in his suit. <laughs> on the site. Yeah, hysterical. that's pretty funny. Um, Jonas. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they've even asked if he's, like, going to come out and cost him and stuff. He's like, nah, that thing's too heavy. You know, I'll just wear, like, a like a unitard or something. Yeah, I think he was saying he wants to get one made that he could take off easily. Yeah, exactly, because, you know, that thing is like a bodysuit. It really – he says it costs, like, $10,000 to modify that whole thing altogether. So yeah, that's, crazy. That's, that's like a miniature Batman suit at this point, you know what I mean? So with that being said, uh, it's it would be very interesting to see him. He's five zero and one, so five wins, one draw. Um, you know, he's fought he's fought only in um, in uh, Washington. So with you know, with that being said, his his uh, of course his level of competition comes into question. But uh, you know, it, it it should be interesting. You know, to see how, how what he does from here. Emmanuel Wallow, I don't I don't know much about him. I know he's seven two and one. He's twenty eight. Not a bad record. You know what I mean? So. Uh, he did uh, win his only World Series of Fighting fight, but that was only by disqualification. So, yeah. uh, I think he actually might be a guy from the New York, uh, New Jersey area. Um, I wouldn't know. That's the thing. I yeah. don't know much about this guy. He fought in uh, the CFFC, so I'm pretty he sure. He fights out of New Jersey, pay. so probably. What was that? He fights out of New Jersey. so. Oh yeah, he does. But um, he fought in the CFFC, which is a local promote, professional mm -hmm. promotion around here. So, be very interesting to see how he does. Jonas, why do you think he does in his pro debut, or I mean, in his uh, uh in his like, I guess the big time fight, you know? I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Phoenix Jones a chance. You know, we'll see what he can do. Uh, you know, the guy obviously is fearless. He really does risk his life, you know, when he goes out to stop these kind of rinky dink crimes or whatever, fighting little street thugs. But And he's shown that he can fight in, you know, a sanctioned uh, competition. So he's not a bad fighter. So I'm going to give him a chance to say he can win it. Yeah, I mean, all to get, I mean, he has a very extended uh, amateur record, too. I believe he's 15-1-1. Yeah. One and, one. Yeah. and uh, amateur fighting, and, you know... Um, that can always be a early uh, factor in your career, especially with that many fights going into your pro career. I think that helps and benefits him. And sure enough, I think it has, you know, going five zero and one that you can't take that away from him, but yeah, we'll see how he does. This is a welterweight bout and uh, we'll certainly see how he does. And uh, you know, just, just the fact that, you know, 
uh, everything that surrounds his name, Ben Fodor. Uh, should be very interesting to see the walkout and the interviews and everything. Uh, I think he probably takes a lot of the attention away from this card. Um, but that's not the only big name. I mean, we also have – I mean, what, uh, before yeah. – after that fight, we'll also have o- Ozzy Dugalubkov. <laughs> God knows if I said that right. Yeah. Versus uh, Lucas Montoya. Now I've seen Ozzy fight, and he he is a very exciting fighter. He had a, what I thought was fight of the night, the last card that he was on. Um, let me double check and see which card that was, because he had a very great fight. Um, I believe it was also a fight um, where he wasn't supposed to win. I believe he was a huge underdog. He was he was fighting uh, thirteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. September. I remember that fight, and he won by a knockout. It was a good. It was a good finish, and uh, has uh, also lost one under the banner, though. So we'll see how he does. I I personally think that that fight should be great. Uh, Hayes facing Lucas Montoya. I don't know too much about Lucas. Um, so with that being said, we'll just kind of let that one surprise us, just like I said the other one. Um, the next fight, uh, the co-main event of the evening. Now, also, fight fans, Melvin Gillard was supposed to fight on this card, but. He got pulled because he was being silly, I guess. You know, there's, like, a, a lot of requirements you have to fill out before you can even get your license. And he didn't even fill out his medicals to get his license. So, I mean, it's too close to fight night. And the World Series of Fighting say, uh, yeah, we got to pull him. So, I, we'll talk about that after this uh, the card, though. But Nick Newell taking on Joe Con- uh, Condon. It's uh, good to see Nick Newell get back in action. Uh, as far as Joe Con- uh, Condon, I think that uh, – you know, Nick Newell wins this one. He's very susceptible to submission uh, as far uh, as far as his uh, career entails. He's 11 and 7, and uh, quite a few of them are, or a couple of them are by submission. So I, I think it'll be interesting. Um, what do you got, Chris? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know too much about Condon, but um, Nick Newell is a legitimate, like, top guy in their organization at lightweight. He didn't look too great against Justin Gaethje. I mean, he had his he had a few moments, but aside from that, Gaethje beat him up pretty badly. And then uh, yeah, but that's Justin was, Gaethje. You know what I mean? I, that guy I, is yeah, proven. I'm very aware. I yeah. I think Nick Newell is a really good fighter, and I mean, he showed it. He's won fights in the World Series of Fighting, and he's won fights outside of it. He's a champion outside of it in the, for XFC. So he's definitely a guy who has all the makings to be a top guy in the division, and I think he might have another title run him in the organization. But uh, speaking of Condon, I don't know too much about him. Judging by his shirt dog picture, he looks like he isn't a fighter at all. Well, let me tell you about Condon. Um, I, well, I'm looking up his stuff now. I see he's 12-7, and seven, so I'm not really entirely impressed by that. He has a win in the World Series of Fighting. Yeah, his yeah. last fight against Johnny Nunez at, at World Series of Fighting uh, 17, that was headlined I think by... I, I think uh, I actually watched it. I definitely watched it. Yeah, I mean, I he, he, it was he crazy was because, uh, was it Johnny he Nunez? Was Johnny yeah. Nunez was supposed to fight somebody else, and on very, very short notice because of weight loss or something like that, or like, you know, because of the weigh-in, something Wait, happened. Right, the yeah. guy, he, his original opponent couldn't make it, so on sh- very short notice... Joe Conn took on, um, you know, took a took a chance to come up from the prelims, yeah. fight him on the main card. Actually, it was the co-main event, like this one is, and uh, was able to get the guillotine choke right there at the very like last few. Yeah. yeah, and he was losing that fight. It was a really good comeback. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, I, I definitely. I this definitely is a very good that. fight, actually. Now that I remember that. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, he, that's definitely impressive. But uh, other than that, I'm not really too impressed with his record. And I think uh, no oh, one yeah. takes this one. Yeah, he certainly needs to start, uh, you know, racking them wins up and and really improving where he needs to, uh, if he wants to really uh, start uh, using his name to get uh, to get more uh, publicity out, you know. But beating a guy like Nick Newell, that's certainly a good start. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I'm never gonna count a guy like Nick Newell out right now. I mean, uh, other than Gaethje, who's the best at that division in my opinion, um, uh, at least on this roster for sure. Uh, you can't count him out. So with that, I got Nick Newell. Jonas? I've got Nick Newell. I mean, he's he's proven all doubters wrong. He can do a whole lot with what he has. So uh, I'm going with Nick Newell, straight up. Straight up. Uh, <laughs> uh, before we get to the main event, just to make a point, uh, Jose Aldo's uh, translator is fighting on the prelims of this car. Wait, no way. We're serious? What's his name? <laughs> that long-haired dude who was at, like, the World Tour. No way. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. What's his name? Uh, Sal Almeida. The Spider Almeida. Yeah. <laughs> That's Jose hilarious. Aldo's, 
interpreter. It's well, really I got him winning if because I would assume he'd be training at Nova and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he fought. Apparently, he fought for Bellator. Damn, he's seventeen and good. five. That's pretty yeah. good. It's not it's bad. Not no, it's not bad to be on the uh, especially when you're especially with to be on the prelims. There's a guy named Johnny Cupcakes Campbell fighting on the prelims. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, these prelims kill okay. me. Oh lord. Yeah, that's pretty silly. These prelims aren't actually bad. The last, the last, like, uh, like me, me and Jonas were talking about it, like, uh, um, the other day, where we were talking about how little some of these guys get paid, but then we look at their oh, records yeah. and it kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? Dude, there's someone making five hundred bucks. No, nah, it was seven fifty. Yeah, or yeah, was seven fifty that I saw. Yeah. I, I yeah, saw it was seven fifty, but he had a record of yeah, he was seven fifty, but he had a record of fifteen and twenty five. That makes sense. Yeah, see, that makes sense. I mean, let's so let's be real. If you're gonna fight, if you're gonna fight at the professional level, but that's gonna be your record, obviously, you're not a professional. <laughs> yeah, they they just pay those guys to just show up and hit each other. To show up, yeah, exactly. Just to kind of fill out the card, you know what I mean? And um, there's another guy. His name's Chip Pollard. He's seven and seven. You know, I bet you that's one of the guys getting paid those very lowly rated contracts you know what i mean yeah um like a guy now jose aldo's interpreter 17 to 5 that that guy could easily have leeway for a much higher paying contract <laughs> yeah he could be making something like i don't know probably like he'll probably be one of those guys that makes like what two one or two thousand three, or three thousand or something yeah. like that he'll probably um, make like two and two three and three something like that yeah something like that and uh you know but see i mean that you know they fill out these guys with these crazy these crazy uh records that aren't good you know so uh, it makes sense in my eyes, and so you know, yeah. like let me look at who's at the bottom. At the bottom, it's not that bad. It's like five and one. There's a guy seven and six. That's not good. Uh, six and two, eight and three. Yeah. So I, I get why some of these guys get paid that really crud rate, <laughs> you know. Um, but it makes sense. You know, you gotta really. I mean, if you want to fight for these big promotions like World Series of Fighting and Bellator and you know UFC, you gotta have a better record than that. You know, it's different when you're Mark Hunt who has like what nine and eight or something like that. Um, it's different when you're him because, you know, he's had such a profile career and, uh, you know, fought only big names across his MMA career. You know what I mean? So with that uh, being said, it, it makes sense why some of these guys get paid the lower rates that they do. I will be watching the the prelims now because I do want to see how Almeida does <laughs> just because you mentioned that. And also because I want to see this guy Johnny Cupcakes lose because that's a horrible nickname. <laughs> <laughs> That is, you gotta be kidding me right now. Discrimination. I, <laughs> seriously, he's got the same nickname as Misha Tate from her Strike Force days. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's that's pretty bad. That's bad. You know what I mean? Um, Actually, her nickname was Takedown in the Strike Force days. Nah, her nickname was Cupcake back in the day. She, it was Cupcake, and then she, oh wait, that's right, huh? Then she it was Takedown. Yeah, it was Takedown, and then she switched it to Cupcakes now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it switched. I got it back. Yeah, Takedown's a worse nickname than Cupcake. Shut up. Not, to, not to me. I think take it, I think Takedown is way better. Why would you, okay, tell me why. It's so corny. You couldn't think of anything better than Takedown? It's better than Cupcakes, in my opinion. At least Cupcakes, like, kind of original. <laughs> Obviously not for this guy. Oh, he yeah, been but around? Not for this guy, Johnny Cupcakes Campbell. I don't even. I, I really want to know why he's like why why he let that be his nickname. Like I hear a lot of these fighters say, yeah, they just somebody called me Cupcakes and I just ran with it. I'd be like, no, bitch, that is not my name. My name is not that. <laughs> Cut that shit right out. Nah, he's not. He's not Cupcake though. He's Cupcakes multiple cupcakes. <laughs> like that makes it any better. <laughs> Man, that, that definitely fits Misha better because she definitely got more cupcakes than this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put that out there. Uh, yeah, All man, right, come on. All right, moving on. Moving on to the main event of the evening. <laughs> Still. Oh, man, this is horrible. Don't rush me, though, man. Come on. I don't care what time you're going to bed tonight. Uh, we, nobody uh, does. Are you going to start ready? Am I going to have to hear Nick Boyne already? Yeah. Right now, I'm shutting you down. I don't care what time you're going to bed. All right, come on. <laughs> to the main event of the evening now let's let me remind you this is uh david branch versus ronnie march now david branch being the world series of middle uh middleweight champion uh is fighting at 205 and this is because this is the other bracket of the light heavyweight tournament that was supposed to feature originally ronnie marks versus Vinny magaish 
and Matt Hamill versus Thiago Silva. That was how the tournament started. Now we have David Branch versus Ronnie Marks, and then we uh, and then on the other bracket was supposed to be Thiago Silva and Matt Hamill from the last event at World Series of nineteen. Um, Teddy, uh, Teddy, uh, oh my God, Teddy yeah, Teddy Holder came in twelve hours notice. Twelve hours notice to come up from the prelims to the uh, co-main event of the evening to take on former UFC fighter Thiago Silva and ended up knocking him out in the first round. That alone really has me interested in this in this tournament all of a sudden because before I was just like, eh, okay, whatever. Now you have a little bit of a story to it, and, and uh, you lost Vinny Magaes due to staff, I believe, or some type of injury. Uh, don't quote me on that. But uh, and came and in comes David Branch, the World Series of Fighting middleweight champion, who's trying to become a dual champion of the promotion. Now that made like both stories on both sides of the bracket now really have me interested in this card or in this whole you know the light heavyweight uh, title crowning. And so with that. Um, I think there's a lot of intrigue in this fight, and there should be. And Ronnie Marks being the former uh, UFC fighter um, as well. Actually, I, I feel like, you know, as we were talking about earlier, Chris, he got uh, he got cut quite quickly. And, you know, Ronnie Marks actually had a 3-2 and two record on his way out. You know, he lost two in a row, yeah. But, you know, when you win three fights, you know, you would think there'd be a little bit of leeway for something like that, you know. But uh, he got released upon that and uh, got a couple wins, got signed by the World Series. and um, now it's taking on the middleweight champion, so there, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fun factors in this light heavyweight tournament that there weren't there before. And so, and uh, I mean, what do you think? Uh, do you agree? Disagree, Chris? Yeah, I think uh, I think the tournament's a cool way to crown a champion. I think it's fun, and especially as you said, with all the storylines going on, we have uh, a David Branch, who's a middleweight champion, looking to become a dual uh, division champion right away in a basically a new division and then um we have the other side of the bracket with teddy holder who just came in there beat up tiago silva knocked him out out of nowhere and i mean yeah it's really i mean it's exciting and uh as for this fight um it's hard to judge because i looking so good at one in maybe five and i don't know if the size advantage will come into play for it uh honey marks which I could definitely could see it doing, um, but I I don't know. Branch looked really good. He looked great against Jushin Okami. He looked great against Jesse Taylor. I mean, this guy's been on a roll since losing to Anthony Johnson back in Titan. So I'm gonna probably I'm gonna go with David Branch. I could see it going either way, especially at 205 and not at 85. But I'm gonna go with Branch definitely. Jonas, what about you? What do you think of this whole tournament in general? Uh, definitely think. Um... Definitely thinking David Branch is going to win that fight. Uh, he's a champion for the reason for a reason at uh, 185, and he could definitely make that uh, that move to be the dual champion. Um, as much as I'd love to see a, a Rocky story with uh, Teddy Holder coming in the way he did, uh, I think uh, David Branch will definitely be more prepared, and he'll be able to take down. Anybody that stands in his way of getting that right heavyweight belt. So, uh, overall, David Branch is going to win it. I like it. Yeah, I mean, uh, from my opinion, uh, David Branch, yeah, he's just he just seems to be in his prime right now. I mean, the guy just seems to be right where he needs to be. His his his, gra his grappling was more dangerous than it's ever looked before. Um, you know, he's fought in the UFC before, and it's just man, I think maybe it was just a little too early for him. You know, because he was a uh, you know. Uh, you know, he, well, first of all, he took on some big names as well. He fought like guys like Gerald Harris, um, you know, and uh, Husamar Paul Harris in his run there, and uh, you know, also won a couple fights. But you know, this, those those losses to those big names kind of, you know, did him in. And then, uh, you know, yeah, ever since he's been cut from from the promotion, he's only his only loss is to Anthony Johnson, who has since found his way back into the UFC and is fighting John Jones next week, next month. Yeah. So. You know, I, yeah, I have to agree. I think David Branch is looking like he's going to win this thing. Yeah, I mean, he's just got so much momentum going on. Ronnie Marks, uh, while uh, has ha, while since being cut from the UFC as well, has looked impressive. Um, you know, winning uh, especially his debut in the um, in the World Series of Fighting at, at uh, number twelve last fall. So now uh, he's he's really got a big opportunity. Um, but the fact that he's never fought at two or hasn't fought at two hundred five in a long time, I feel will probably uh, 
be tough for him, at least only because of the fact that David Branch, I'm sure, can easily be more accustomed to 205 with the skill set that he has, you know. Um, it's not like either guy will have too much of a size advantage. I know Marks is big, but he's not like that big. Not like where if he's at 205, it makes a big difference, you know. So, yeah. So with that, I think that Branch will be able to uh, utilize his, his already awesome grappling. We'll probably get a finish in the mid-tier part of the fight, like at the third or fourth round, I feel. Um, and David Branch will move on, and it'll be between him and Teddy Holder. And then uh, right then and there, you'll have a right a champion versus a guy who's really shouldn't shouldn't have been there, and he's there. And you know that'll make for a great headliner. So I, I think that uh, I'm you know that's the thing about this tournament. It's got so much around it that it wasn't before, and I'm excited. And uh, with that being said, you know. That's, that looks like it does it for the World Series of Fighting Cards. That does it for the World Series of Fighting Card. This card looks great. You should definitely check it out. NBC Sports. Um, at the same time, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll have your choices here because we also have Bellator 136 going on this Friday, April 10th. Um, we'll be headlined by the lightweight championship uh, being on the line with Will Brooks defending against Dave Jansen, undefeated in Bellator. Before we get there, we'll talk about the rest of the main card. We'll go with Marcin Health first versus Alexander Sarnaski. This fight is awesome. I like uh, Marcin Health. I'm a huge fan of his grappling, you know, because he does, like, only because uh, I'm biased, because whenever I'm yelling at him to do something on the ground, he does it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's when you know a guy's really good. And we all agree that this is by far the best card going on this weekend, right? Uh, by far is, is a little far, but, you know, it's certainly – it's certainly. I mean, it, World Series of Fighting has some good fights in there, no doubt. But I think this is by far the best card. It has the best talent on there, a lot of fun fights too. Let's answer that real quick. Jonas, what, what, what card are you most excited for this weekend? Uh, I'm going to have to say the Beltro card. Um, yeah. There's just – yeah, there's just a whole lot more to look forward to to see, um, you know, and it's one that I'll be able to actually watch. So, uh, you know, um, you don't have yeah, Sportsnet no or not Sportsnet, uh, NBC Sports. Oh, I do, but you know, I, it, it's all dependent on when I get home. You know, I work late, all that good stuff. So, mm-hmm. uh, which one's later? Actually, Is At, it the, well, uh, I believe Bellator starts six. Six to it, it'll go from six to eight Pacific time, so that's about what well, you're in Texas. So that's oh, about, that's eight to ten. So that's eight to ten, and then World Series of Fighting actually starts an hour later, from seven to nine. Oh, okay. So yeah, I will be able to see both. You'll be able to see both. Yeah, you can just switch back yeah. and forth. For me, y- yes and no, because the co-main and the main do it for me, but Marcin Held also does it. But that's the same thing that World Series of Fighting has. The main and co-main have me, as well as the opener, which has Phoenix Jones for World Series of Fighting. So. You know, yeah, uh, I mean, it has. I mean, the Phoenix that's why I don't say by thing, far. You know what I mean? Uh, I think the Phoenix Jones thing is definitely interesting. I think Nick Duel does like. I think he just takes out Joe Condon pretty easily, and then the Branch fight it could be really good, or I could see it being okay. This card has fights that I, I think are going to be good no matter what. You're, we're going to see some fireworks between Will Brooks, Dave Jansen. We have Schilling on the card against oh. a guy who can actually give him some competition. We have. A guy in Marcin Held is always fun to watch. And then uh, Volkov and Johnson's not a bad fight either to round out the main card. So, I mean, I think this is pretty solid best card of the weekend. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I will, yeah, I'll definitely say it's probably the best card. And you want to know why I think Joel Schilling being on the card really kind of does it for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. Marcin Held is, is, of course, a tremendous grappler. And, uh, yeah, you know, he's fighting is no joke. Yeah, Tiger Sonoski is really good. Yeah, Marcin Held's good too. I mean, both guys are. They both have. They both competed in pancreation in the you know in in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Opens. Uh, you know, for the Federation of Jiu Jitsu, you know, he's done a lot. And uh, out of his twenty wins, eleven are by submission. And uh, you know, he's just looked so great as well as since joining Bellator. He's only lost one uh, under the promotion. You know what I mean? And uh, that was to Jansen, who fights in the main event. And uh, other than that, he's beat everybody else. He's beat – he's what he's – what's his record in Bellator? Four, um, six, it looks seven, like he only has – He's 9-1 and one under the Bellator banner. That's really freaking impressive. Um, you know, I mean, it could be arguable that the winner of this maybe gets the next crack at, at Brooks. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. With this, it definitely is hard to tell. I think that this will be a certain – I don't think this will be one of those grappling fights where you don't, where you, you, you you're not having a good time. I think that – you know, both will, will certainly put on a, a great performance. I believe that, you know, uh, Alexander uh, also has really good hands. 
Um, so he presents m more dangers, I think, in this di in this fight to uh, Marcin. But I think that he'll be or will be able to get it to the ground and get the finish. And uh, you know, with that, wow, I'm looking at his record. He actually, out of his 30 wins, he has 18 submissions. <laughs> oh shit! Oh man, this guy's excited. Uh, has an exciting record himself. So, um, but he's also fought uh, fallen to Will Brooks, the opposite of Jensen on the in the main event and. Uh, other than that, I think that is his only Bellator loss. Let me see. No, he's also lost to Rich Clemente in his debut, but that was a while ago. Yeah, that was about three, four years ago. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, these guys make up for a great uh, fight uh, on the card. You know what? Yeah, because of that, I think I'm going to have to say Bellator is the best card of the week. Um, so, with that being said, I think I'll go here with Marcin Held. I think he'll be able to uh, to surprise the Russian, kind of like how uh, Tim Johnson did this past weekend, and get the win, get the submission this time. Uh, Jonas, who do you got? I'm going to say Tiger Sarnowski has it, man. Ooh. I'm going with Tiger Sarnowski. I like him a lot. I mean, I, I have seen Marcin Held, and I'm really impressed with his grappling, but I like Tiger Sarnowski. All right, Chris, what do you got? Uh, yeah, this is a pretty tough one. I mean... You can't sleep on Tiger Skinovsky, so I mean, um, I just say based on the recent competition, I'm gonna go with Marcin Held. I think he's been fighting tougher guys lately, and I think he's been looking really good against them. And um, I don't know, we could see this if it. Uh, a lot of times in MMA, we see guys who are good uh, grapplers wind up staying on the feet. If that happens, uh, Tiger could definitely pull this one off. But I think Held. He's going to look to pull guard, look for some leg locks, and I think he might pull one off. Should be interesting, man. Both guys are actually really good at leg locks. Marcin Held has a couple toe holds, a few heel hooks as well, um, and a knee bar. And then uh, so does um, Tiger, man. He's got a, he's got a few leg lock submissions of his own. Man, this is going to be fun. I like this fight. It's going to be, I mean, because, you know, guys who are good at leg locks make for great scrambles on the ground because there's more to look for for them. You know what I mean? Instead of guys that just look for the rear naked. All, all the time or something, you know. Um, this should be it should certainly be an entertaining fight, and I can't wait. And um, we'll move on to the next fight on the card. Uh, let's just talk about the co-main because I, I can't contain it. I can't. I can't. It has to. It has to be talked about. Joe Schilling versus Rafael Carballo. Oh, that. First of all, Joe Schilling is one of the most exciting guys in combat sports. I mean, I say that because he's he competes between Bellator and Glory Kickboxing, and. Um, has thus far done great this year, you know, already fought for glory, um, and, uh, won that fight by a decision, I believe it was glory 19, 18, 19. Yeah. And, um, now he's going to fight, uh, Rafael Carvalho, who has essentially become the Brazilian Melvin Manhoff, of Bellator because of the fact that, you know, he's just knocking dudes left and right out. He's in 10 and one, nine of which are by KO and fighting Joe Schilling, a guy who's, um, you know, just, a great fighter all overall, and especially if you put him in a, in the cage in MMA, you've seen him. He's so dangerous. This is going to be an awesome fight. And for me, I, I can't back off my boy. I got to go with Joe Schilling. Um, so with that being said, Jonas, who do you got in this amazing middleweight fight? I've got Joe Schilling, man. I mean, the guy's just on a roll. He's on an absolute tear right now. Um, you know, when he knocked out uh, Madhoff back in November – you had to become a fan if you didn't know anything about him before that. I mean, he had, and he had a rough road. He had a, you know, I don't know about rough road, but definitely had one of the not as easy roads uh, as most fighters have had, uh, or some fighters have had. So I, I can get behind this guy, and uh, I really like what Joe Schilling offers in the way of striking. Uh, so I'm going with Joe Schilling. Chris. Yeah, I got to agree with both of you. I'm going to go with Joe Schilling here. Um, I think if Carvalho decides to stand up because he's been so confident in his knockout power, he could land, but I don't think he will. I think Schilling is too technical on the feet, I think, uh, due to his kickboxing and Muay Thai background, and I think that's going to come into play here because the he is, doesn't have the best MMA record, but that's because he's been submitted. And uh, I think he's going to be more technical than Carvalho. He, he'll pick his shots better. He won't be looking for the knockout too often, and then I think he'll get it. Yeah, I mean, uh, looking at Carvalho's uh, finishes, most of them come in the first round. 
um yeah one for round one round one round one round two yeah. round three round one one round <laughs> yeah um, definitely i i definitely see him coming out hard and swinging but that might not be the best idea against joe Schilling. you don't you don't want to stand with this guy even though carvalho has been able to knock guys out an impressive dude he beat brian rogers in his last fight but i mean Schilling's is just too good on the feet Rafael actually has a, a little bit of a Muay Thai, uh, re- uh, not record, but, I mean, he says he's competed in around 20 fights in Muay Thai. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, that's definitely that's definitely worthwhile, but Schilling's one of the best guys in the world in kick- kickboxing and Muay Thai. Oh, certainly, right now, so. you know what I mean? It's just like, man, this is this just more to stack on in the sense that this will probably be one of the most exciting fights to watch if it, if it goes past the first round. And uh, or we just might get one of the be- be- uh, better highlights of the year between the between these two. It should definitely be interesting, and yeah. uh, I-, I can't wait. This is gonna be awesome. And uh, with that, we'll move to the main event of the evening for the Bellator lightweight title. Uh, D- uh, Will Brooks will be taking on Dave Jensen, who is undefeated um, under the Bellator banner, and it's and I feel like for him, this title shot is long overdue. Um, you know, so I. For me, I'll let Chris go first. He knows more about Jensen. Go ahead. All right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I know a decent amount about Jensen. I've seen him fight a couple times in Bellator. Not too much, but I saw his last two fights against uh, Held and Rick Hahn. And this guy's a good wrestler. I mean, he's able to keep guys down. He's able to do what he does best. And um, the only thing is, I think in this one, Will Brooks is a good enough wrestler to – keep this fight standing, and if he can't, and if it's a little hard for him to keep it standing, I think he, he when he gets taken down, he's able to get back to the feet. We saw it in the Mike, the first Michael Chandler fight. So, I yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. If Jansen can get him down and keep him there, he could win this fight, but I don't think that's going to really happen. I think that uh, Jansen might get him down a few times, but Will Brooks will get right back up, and he'll win this fight on the feet. He'll keep kind of like a sprawling brawl style. I don't think he's going to want to wrestle too much here. I think he's going to use his jab, use his footwork. He's been looking really good on the feet lately. And I think they'll take him. He can either find the TKO somewhere, or I think he might get the decision. Well, for me, I think that, you know, Jansen has certainly shown more of a grappling approach to most of his fights uh, lately. You know, but, uh, you know, to, for the names that he's beaten, such as, you know, Marcin Held, Recon, and, uh, you know, just remaining undefeated since uh, the WEC uh, folded. He's undefeated for five years. You know, that's got to count for something, and then we'll see how he does. For me, I got to go with Brooks. I feel like Brooks is just a star in the making right now, you know, and I think uh, for me, uh, with this ratings battle that Bellator and the World Series of Fighting are going to have, I really, you know, I, I, I for this one particular time, I never have a favorite, but for this one particular time, I want Bellator to win. I want them to see that Brooks is is recognized, is noticed, and you know, I, and I think that Will Brooks deserves that, man. He's such a he's such a talented kid. He's uh he's fun to watch, you know, and he puts on um amazing performances. And so with that, I, I want I would like to see him get the win the ratings battle here, only because he's gonna put him on a great fight. And yeah, I see him winning. I see him being able to take everything this guy's got, defend that strap, and then get ready for the next one. And hopefully, fans will be just as excited as I probably will. Um. With that being said, I got Will Brooks. And, yeah, like you said, I think it's decision. I think uh, I'm not going to discount Jansen in any way. I think that he's going to be able to hold his own enough to where he takes it to uh, – he survives to the judge's decision. Jonas? I got Will Brooks. Um, Will Brooks is – Unanimous. I'm sorry? Unanimous. Yeah, man. I got Will Brooks because this is the this is the guy that Bellator can actually – you know, outside of McGeary, honestly, Will Brooks is a guy they can hang their entire uh, brand on. you got a few guys out there that can do it. Will Brooks is one of them. And uh, there's a reason for that. He's a very special fighter. He just gets the job done. Uh, you know, we can all talk about what these guys are able to do and how they do it. But the thing that you know draws me most to fighters is just being able to win, getting the job done. However, they have to do it and fighting the fortitude to do so. That's that's what impresses me most about uh, all of fighting. I mean, it, some styles play to others' uh, tastes, but my thing is, if if you find a way to win, you're special. If you find a way to win consistently, you're special. And Will Brooks does that. Yeah, Will Brooks. In what manner? Uh, you know, I, I've got him winning a decision, a very. Uh, 
Yeah, in the dominant one, he'll use his uh, wrestling. Uh, he can keep it on the feet if he has to, but he'll uh, use his wrestling and just grapple it out. I would hope he'd be able to mix it up in there. I'd like to see him also try and keep it standing just to show him that, hey, I'm better than you everywhere, which is always kind yeah. of the, the kind of wind I, I like seeing, you know see. what I mean? Keep going, my bad. No, well, yeah, I mean, it's just that's always the kind of wind that I like seeing, you know, guy who knows that he's better than you everywhere and shows it, you know. Um, with that being said, I think Brooks will be able to do that and shows it and gets the judge's decision. If he gets a finish, man, that's just – that's more, you know uh, – cherry on top for him because you know he's got a real opportunity to show Bellator hey I'm your guy you know start paying attention to me you know because I feel like up till now they haven't give Brooks his due you know what I mean um yeah he's beaten he's Chandler been twice he's, himself. yeah you know what I mean and so you know I, I uh you know leaving with Eddie Alvarez leaving the trail that you know oh Bellator is just not exciting anymore that's not that's so far from from the, the case and Bellator has put on some great cards already this year and I believe this will certainly be another one of them. And uh, that being said, we've covered all our fights. But uh, Yeah, and um, uh, before we get off this fight, just speaking about it, to your point, um, even they, he was saying that they were on the Michael Chandler wagon, the first and second fights around. They were one, It seemed like they wanted Chandler to beat him because he was their poster boy. Oh, and, I um, bet, yeah. Yeah, and as for the fight itself, I think um, more so that he's going to use his um, – defensive wrestling to keep it on the feet and not so much offensive yeah that's what i see going on you know i um uh and from you know that makes sense you know because i think he's better on the feet from what i've seen yeah so ah uh, yeah this would be great I, and you know all the luck to brooks you know there's the thing there's a the thing that me and, and me and jonas have spoken on it when it's just been me and him on this podcast where we talk about what bellator can do to really move forward um, and getting really recognized, you know what I mean? And it's, it's really showing the, the, the right fighters, the right attention, you know what I mean? Cause you know, I know of course they would have wanted Chandler to win. And I understand that there's nothing wrong with that, you know, because that's your guy. That's the guy everybody's looking toward. That's the guy that's on all commercials doing, getting all this attention for you guys. You know, I understand that. Um, but just because a guy like Brooks comes around and shows you, Hey, I'm better than this guy. Sorry. That's how it is. Um, you, you can't just, you know, decide, okay, he's not important because he is. And, you know, you got to really see that he is a, a possible uh, factor in your success. He can be, you know, he's exciting to watch. He's got a following and, uh, you know, he's even got an, a, a great personality for the media, for, you know, the fans. Um, I could just see that this guy wants to be noticed, um, but he wants to also be noticed more so for his fighting style than just his words. And I respect that. And so... With that, I expect him to uh, perform uh, uh, perfectly this weekend. So this Friday, going on April 10th. Um, we've talked about all the fight cards, uh, but there's also a few fights that have been announced that we uh, we got to talk about. One of them just announced, uh, Nate Diaz and Matt Brown. Now, I'm actually very intrigued uh, to talk about uh, talk about this fight to Jonas because he is not intrigued to this fight at all, and I kind of want to know why. Go ahead, go ahead and spit it. I want to know why. Yeah, not in the least. Um, I do realize that uh, Brown's coming off of a couple losses here. Um, I also realize that uh, Nate's coming off of a loss to, you know, the eventual champion, RDA. Uh, but this fight really doesn't do anything for Matt Brown, to be fair. Um, Nate Diaz hasn't fought the Walter Wade in quite some time. And uh, Matt Brown just lost to the former champion. His last two losses were against who is now the champion, Robbie Lawler, and who was the champion, Johnny Hendricks. So he's lost to two former champions. Or, you know, the champion and a former champion. Uh, Nate Diaz has lost to, you know, RDA, who just beat uh, Pettis. Sure, okay, great. But, you know, this is also a guy that lost to guys like Josh Thompson who really hasn't been seen much either, you know. Don't undermine Josh Thompson. <laughs> I, 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 Look at you getting all defensive. I, I'm only saying that because Josh Thompson hasn't really done a whole lot in recent in recent months, years even. He beat Benson Henderson. They lied to us. Oh, that was certainly the case for me, yeah. yeah. But that's a, story for another, that's a story for another day. <laughs> we can talk about that after. I don't care. Story that's a story for another day. <laughs> no, go ahead, Jonas. But, you know... I don't know. I 
guess it works for Diaz fans. You know? My case is I, this. Jonas, if I could just let you know, like, think about it this way. Matt Brown has lost two fights in a row. Regardless of the fact of where those guys are at in the division, he's lost two fights in a row. If you're yeah. Matt Brown, you're probably happy. You're getting a, a high-profile name, and you're getting it on the main card of one of the biggest cards of the year, and it's probably a gimme. You know what I mean? I, I can, uh, so I can see where Matt Brown benefits in the end with all this. Um, and, you know, it's a guy that I'm sure, you know, a, a lot of people understandably favor – Brown over Diaz. Now that, but Diaz is a guy that certainly would love the style of fighter that Brown is. Who's going to come forward and he's going to come forward and they're just going to meet and they're going to trade punches and talk shit in the middle of the cage and it's going to be awesome. That's why I'm excited about it. I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense for Brown. For Diaz, it's certainly a uh, a fight that's uh, open, like that's one of these mountains he's going to have to climb because I think the, the odds are stuck are stacked more against Diaz than Brown, obviously. So well, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I think it works out. I really do. I think that yeah, if Nate I was going to move up, so. this is the kind of fight that could, that could def, that makes sense. Because for Brown, yeah, he yeah, needs I a win. He wants them to remain mel- relevant. He needs a win. And against a big name like Nate, it's going to work out, I think, for him in the end. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And um, I just think that um, the biggest factor in this fight is Nate Diaz moving up to 170 because I think he – He's a little bit small for 170, and we've seen it in the past go against him to his detriment. And um, I, But the way it is is that when Nate Diaz was at 170, he was getting grappled and getting beat by guys who were bigger than him. At 155, I, he was looking a lot better for a time there. And then, I mean, and he, he looked, fought bigger guys like – he fought bigger uh, 55ers like Benson Henderson. Yeah, and you know? uh, RDA was a guy at 55. Yeah. Yeah. RDA is a really big 55er. I mean, I mean yeah. the thing is, though, is that, um, like Nick was saying, Matt Brown's style plays into uh, what Nate Diaz does. Well, their Matt styles Brown, play into each other, really. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think more so Matt Brown's style is uh, beneficial to Nate Diaz is because the way Matt Brown fights, he doesn't throw a lot of kicks. He might clinch you if he gets close enough, and he throws a lot of tight shots that are going to knock you out. The way Nate Diaz fights, he keeps his punches long, he keeps you on the end of his punches, and then he moves forward, and he beats you up for a little bit. And I think, uh, I mean, if this fight, if Nate Diaz was fighting Matt Brown at, like, 55, I know Matt Brown can't make 55, but let's just say you fight him at 55, I'd favor Nate Diaz in this fight just because of the style. But at 70, I'm a little more concerned I I don't think Matt Brown's gonna try to grab too much in this fight, and I could see Nate Diaz winning, but I just don't like this fight for him at 70. I'm not really sure. I'm not gonna make a pick right now, but I I think it's an interesting fight. It could definitely be a fun one to watch, and it's added to a really good card. So I'll take it. Yeah. Um. And and la- I'll, I'll let Jonas say the last thing, but for me, it's just like you know, I actually would see Matt utilizing his utilizing his grappling just to piss Diaz off. You know. You get that guy just a little over over the top with his shit talking, and then it just becomes more of that than his fighting. And I think that that's actually a good thing. Yeah, but um, do you think Matt getting? I mean, he's a bigger guy, but Nate Diaz is, has a good. Oh, fight if he gets it to the ground, he certainly it. yeah. If he gets it to the ground, he certainly can't be complacent down there. Yeah, obviously. And then uh, another thing that I failed to mention uh, about Matt Brown not using his kicks. It seems like Nate Diaz is recently getting a little frustrated with the leg kicks and. Matt Brown doesn't do that, as we were saying about his style. So I think stylistically, this is a great fight for Nate Diaz. I'm just not too comfortable with the size disadvantage. Uh, well, I mean, it. it I, I just, you know, if Nate's going to go up to 170, then commit to it. You know, build your body up for 170. Get some yeah. muscle going. Make, you know, don't just make it a matter of, oh, I don't have to cut as much weight. Oh, let me build my body up and then cut the, the you know, the unnecessary weight. Get ready and then get in there. And then, you know. You know, um, Matt Matt has, or I mean, uh, Matt has great cardio, but the Diaz brothers' cardio, whew, you know what I mean? Um, utilize those 15 minutes to your benefit. He's gonna try and bully Nate. You know, is Matt? Nate has to be able to keep the pace higher than Matt can handle. That is a tall order. So I mean, that's what makes this fight really interesting to me. Is that um, you know, there are things that Matt can you that usually usually does use to uh, benefit himself in a fight. That are his advantages that Diaz could actually uh, take away from him in this fight, um, 
but that's up to him to do it, and he doesn't always do it in every fight. He's not consistent, you know, with with keeping what what works for him working. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And I wouldn't yeah, be surprised if if yeah. Matt, yeah, I know, you know what I mean. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if Matt, you know, decided, hey, okay, I need to just be ready to do throw a lot of leg kicks. You know, I'll come into this camp, I'll throw a lot of leg kicks. You know, uh, everybody everybody can come into a fight different if the, as long as they're learning and improving. So. I wouldn't be surprised to see Matt being one of these guys, especially coming off two losses, trying to do whatever it takes to improve and to get this win. So uh, all, all together, all is said and done, there's so many factors in it that have me excited. So, you know, jo uh, Jonas, I, if I interrupted anything else you were going to say, that's totally my bad. <laughs> oh, no, don't worry about that, man. We're good. Um, I was definitely just going to agree with you about uh, Diaz's lack of ability to adapt. Uh, I don't know if it's just uh, Nick. I see it a whole lot in Nick. But uh, Nate kind of follows his brother in that regard as well. They just don't adapt very well, and that's the one thing that I—that's uh, the one thing I've always had going against the Diaz brothers in any fight that they've been a part of. They absolutely just don't adapt to their opponent and try to make their opponent do what they want them to do. And the guys they're going up against see this, and they realize like, hey, you know what? They're not going to change. They're not going to change anything else. So all I have to do is something different. They're just going to flick me off, keep this off about it, and I'm going to win the judges. And that's it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's annoying too because Nate hasn't really. Uh, he's gone. He's he's grown more fond of his boxing than he has his overall game, which includes his jiu-jitsu game. You know what I mean? And like early on, that was like one of his best weapons. You know, you go, we go to the ground. Your 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 ass is mine. You know what I mean? I mean, even still, he's seventeen and uh ten, and he's what? He's got eleven submission wins. So yeah. You know what I mean? It's just uh, he's just really he's got to really be he's got to really go back to utilizing what works. You know, like I said, if Matt decides to take this to the ground he's got to utilize that he's got to take that he's got to be like okay your ass is mine give me that limb give me your neck give me something i'm taking it you know um uh, I, that's kind of what i i want more from him you know i you know if he's gonna go to 170 commit to that shit you know i mean yeah. it's definitely surprising that he decided all of a sudden out of nowhere that that's the division he's gonna fight in um and uh so but with that being said you know i, I yeah, hope that uh, uh, uh before we close this one out um i know that um you guys were saying that Nate Diaz doesn't really commit to when his opponents are making something happen, so he doesn't really adapt, especially with both the Diaz brothers. I think I definitely agree with that because even when you look at his record, Nate Diaz has 17 wins, 15 of them are by finish, and out of 10 decisions, he's lost eight. So that kind of tells you that he doesn't really adapt in those fights, and he winds up losing a lot of decisions. Yeah, unless it's going for him good early on, yeah. It's, um... Yeah. It's definitely yeah. an issue he has, you know. I mean, uh, what does it? I mean, he's fought at welterweight in the UFC before. He went two and two. Yeah, he and, lost uh, to Rory and uh, lost to Rory and Dung Young Kim, two guys of which are on the top ten. So I mean, that kind of tells you it's something at least, you know, um, that he's at least willing to take on the top ten. But you know, at this point in his career, he's still young, he's still twenty something. What hell does he? Uh, uh, Nate is. Oh. 29. 29. He's still got some time to really make something of his career and, and, and moving forward and still do a, a lot of a, a lot of great things, especially here in the uh, in the welterweight division, you know, especially with how exciting it is. I'm not saying he, he'll get a title or something like that, but you never know. You never know with him, especially, um, you know, but like I said, he commits. He makes he makes this, you know, everything that it needs to be, which is, you know, basically make the weight right, make uh, make your body uh, adapt to this, go in there and use everything. Don't just, you know, go with what, you know, you think works, you know, because obviously as history has shown uh, for him, it's not always going to be that way. You know what I mean? Um, with that, we'll move yeah. on from that. And, uh, and um, yeah, on to the next stop. We've got a, we had another big fight announced that we spoke about recently, the UFC Fight Night 72 headliner in uh, Frank Mir and Todd Duffy. Yeah, uh, Steve actually, uh, Jonas knows, Steve uh, th th thinks that San Diego's getting no love. What do you think about that fight as a main event? Uh, you know? Uh, yeah. No, go ahead, Jonas. Eh, yeah. yeah, you know, we yeah. talked about that fight, how it ended up going. Um, but I don't know, man. Good for Duffy. Good for Duffy to get a headliner. Um. And I guess even good for Frank to, you know, have a headliner himself. It's, he really hasn't been showing that he's headliner worthy uh, lately. 
Uh, so to, I mean, to give him this opportunity, I, I think that's all right. Uh, he, you know, he's not really going anywhere anymore. But hey, he's a guy that draws uh, money fights or headline fights uh, whenever they're not pay per view or whenever you know nothing really big is popping off at the time. So hey, I can't really be all that upset about it. I don't feel that it's a true uh, robbery or a waste of anyone's time. Uh, in San Diego, it's you know you kind of have to remember that the casuals count too, as far as numbers go. On the business side of it, uh, you know they're going to look at what makes money for them, uh, and casual numbers actually help that. So, oh for really, sure, yeah, that's really all how I feel about it on that one. Yeah, um, when you look at, it, I mean, Todd Duffy, good for him. Like Jonas said, good for him getting a main event slot. Good for him in getting a big name, Frank Mir. We spoke about how we think the fight's going to go, and if he wins that, it'll be even bigger for him that it's in a main event slot. And um, I think there's a couple reasons why that could be the main event. One, there are a lot of fights coming up, a lot of UFC cards coming up, especially in July. They have their big card coming up. They probably want to save a lot of fights for that one. And I'm not expecting this fight night to be too stacked just because there's so many fights coming up and a limited amount of fighters. Uh, aside from that... They're also heavyweights, and Frank Mir is one of them, and he has a big name. That could be why they're in the main event solely. I mean, yep. you, you, maybe yep. we'll see guys in the co-main event where maybe there'll be better matchups in the co-main event or below that even. Maybe we'll get some good matchups out of this card, but there's a reason why these guys are in the main event. That doesn't mean the card's not going to be that good. It could. I'd like to see a lot of – uh, I'm hoping to see a lot of Alliance guys on here. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be um, cool. Does Jeremy Stevens have a fight? Uh, yeah, he's fighting Dennis Bermuda. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I keep forgetting about that one. I'm just thinking of like all the Alliance guys. Um, that'd probably be a good comeback spot yeah, for I Miles Jury. Booked, yeah, that may that'd be a good comeback spot for Miles Jury. Um, oh, oh boy, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, that would be a cool. That'd be. A cool Cool, cool main event if they can get him in there with someone. Yeah, I mean it's in July. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's in July. It's the car that's yeah. get him in there with Barbosa maybe. Oh yeah, They're yeah. I was I was hoping to see Poirier yeah. versus uh Barbosa, but he just got Mark. Uh, yeah, yeah, he just got. Yeah, you sure did. Oh yeah, huh? That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's a perfect fight for him. A guy just outside the top fifteen, like we were talking about. Uh, who do you, who do you see winning that one? Uh Poirier. For you? Yeah, me too. Boy think, is hot, man. He's, he's yeah. a hot commodity. There's some guy that – there's some uh, somebody on our page. I'm trying to remember what he's in. I'm trying to – I'm going to give him a shout-out just because he said this. Uh, what is his name? i got to look it up. But r before we get off that last topic, I really think that, you know, Frank you know, Frank Mir certainly got, got, garnered that spot back after knocking out Bigfoot in his uh, last fight last month – or last month. I mean in February. And uh, so with that, you know, we'll see how he does. Uh for me, I, I do feel like Todd Duffy certainly, um, certainly, uh, it deserves a main event, a main event spot. I mean, he he has the potential and the the athleticism and just the build and the the, the picture of just possibly being one of the biggest stars of the heavyweight division. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a there's a few guys at heavyweight that just don't look like they're athletes. You know what I mean? He looks like one of those guys. Um, like one of those guys that is that that should be there that should be competing and every and you know since you know he's, he gets in there man he gets it done and uh, he's exciting to watch and uh, you know giving him a big name like Mir on a main event slot I like it I, I have no problem with it and so um, oh Zach Elliott Zach Elliott came out uh, from Australia came out and said he thinks War Yancey uh, that guy is B J Penn embodied and I'm like whoa we'll see how whoa. he does man I mean uh. Uh, him versus Poirier, that's an exciting fight for sure. So, and uh, good for Poirier to get a fight back in uh, Louisiana. So, you know, he had, uh, yeah, he was right when he said it. He's like he had he had said uh, in his last win uh, that he hadn't been there in like oh seven oh eight, and yeah, it's been since oh eight since he last fought there seven years. So, good for him to get a fight back in his hometown, home state. And so, uh, that fight's gonna be great. There's one other fight that I know that we haven't talked about. Which one is it? <laughs> anything about it real quick though what do you guys think about Melvin Gillard what do you think's next for him oh Gillard oh uh, Jonas you go ahead you talking about can pull off the uh, off of the World Series card 
Yeah, I mean, it just seems like, you know, he's trying to get cut. And I don't think that Sefa would have a problem obliging at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think he, I think uh, Sefo's about done with him. I fully expect to see um, him being released from his contract within the next month or so. I, I mean, I don't, I don't see why Ray would put up with it anymore. Um, ever since Galar has been caught, been a part of the World Series, he's been pretty unprofessional. I'm just going to be honest. You know, he's been really unprofessional. Uh, uh, missed weight twice. Is you know yeah, not doing his weight, medicals, talking shit about the promotion essentially. Promotion. So I mean, a guy like me, if, if I were to do that, I would get fired from my job pretty quickly. <laughs> so I don't see how he still has his job at this stage. So that, I, I don't really see him being a part of that promotion very much longer. And whether he wants that to happen on his terms or not, he'll get what he wants. I mean, he clearly doesn't want to be a part of World Series anymore. Um, I just don't think that Ray would wait to let him walk on his own. I think Ray's going to go ahead and fire him. And I think he should. I think he should because uh, Galar has pretty much been punking him this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Gallard, yeah, he'll probably be out of there soon. And I mean, he's missed weight twice, and now he's doing whatever the hell he's doing. I honestly, I don't even want to know at this point. Um, aside from that, I mean, he does make a lot of money, and I'm sure he's probably just there at this point for a paycheck. And uh, especially when you consider it's a World Series of Fighting, you probably don't have a lot of money to pay guys. And they're paying Mel- Melvin Gallard a pretty penny, so I'm sure they'll be like, He's more trouble than he's worth, and they'll just get rid of him. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah, same here. And, like, uh, I think that, you know, the fact that he he, he kind of messed up a title fight in his home by making it a three-round fight didn't make weight. And, you know, yeah, I mean, that co- that probably cost view- some viewers. Maybe not a lot, but it cost some. And, you know, it's like, can't be can't be doing that. And it's like, I don't even know if Bellator would even take him. He says he'd like to go over and fight for Bellator or to go back to the UFC. But, like, if you're going to act unprofessional for a lesser promotion, why would a bigger one want to take you? You know what I mean? Um, I mean, that's what he was talking about prior to this this whole – prior to even being taken off the card. I mean, he, he why would the UFC take you back? You know what I mean? They cut you under unfair circumstances, in my opinion. I don't feel like, you know, the one loss to Michael Johnson was enough to get him cut. But it got him cut. And even that, I bet that there was some – even then, I bet that the that there was a bit of unprofessionalism there on his part that, that caused well, him to get cut off the one loss. Huh? There certainly was. Um, if you remember, he, he was pretty mouthy, uh, you know, when he lost to Lozon and lost to uh, – he lost two in a row, didn't he? No, nah, he – well, no, nah, I mean, he uh, after that, he was supposed to fight Ross Pearson in a rematch because he got a no contest from that. Okay. He then uh, was supposed to fight Ross, but then the fight didn't materialize, and he ended up fighting Michael Johnson instead. Right. I'm saying he also lost to Joe Lozon and uh, somebody else. They both tapped him out. Oh, Jim Miller. I forget who the other guy was. Jim Miller. Who? Jim Miller. Yeah, Jim Miller. Okay. Yeah, and he was, you know, he was being pretty unprofessional then. So I don't think he makes a lot of friends in this business. <laughs> you know? And, and, I mean, sure, it's not the business you make friends in at the end of the day, but... He really he just doesn't do himself any favors uh, in a professional manner. It's about relationships, you know. And that's in any business. It's about making relationships and making you know a good impression on people. And he just doesn't do that. Yeah, I mean. So I I don't see how he would find a job anywhere else after this World Series game. Yeah, he'll probably go to even lesser promotions. I don't think he remains in the top three, at least not until he shows that he's capable of being competent at the very least. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, that being said, I think that um, Melvin probably probably goes, I don't know, probably somewhere on Access TV. That's my last thoughts on that. Um, last few subjects here. We actually also have announced that Stefan Struve will, will be taking on Big Nog at UFC 190. We figured that was going to be the call, and it is. Um, uh, a lot of people actually aren't excited about this fight, and that sucks for not for me or for anybody, just for them, you know, because they are gonna. They, these are two guys that are at the area that they're at, um, and for anybody that doesn't want to watch it, it is unfortunate. I think it'll probably be a, an entertaining fight, but I understand why people think that Big Nog is uh, past his game. I don't think that Struve is. Struve's, what sucks is that people want to see that kid retire, and he's only 27, you know? 
That's uh, that's sad to me. I mean, well, you also have to figure in his uh, health issues, man. That's true. I mean, you know, I mean, have a heart problem that you know that that's nothing to joke with. No, nah. nothing to play around with at all. So it's really it's not a matter of him not being good enough to fight. We just want the guy to still be alive. You know. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't want people to say that they don't want to watch him. He's gonna fight regardless. You know, just to, for you to say you don't want to watch him because he's making a decision that could hurt him. That's that's why we watch that's every fighter fight. Thing. That's not that's really a fair thing. thing. You know. I agree with that. That's unfair. You know, that's what I've been hearing. You know, uh, from some of the fans of the page that they don't want to. That they're not interested in this fight strictly because you know they're both past their prime. I guess I wouldn't even say that about Strew. Strew's not even at prime age. You know. And uh, Big Nog, I get. That one I get. He's like Koscheck right now. He wants to uh, finish out his career. I didn't even, you know, I, I didn't even hear people saying that about uh, Big Nog. And I get why. You know, it's because people love Big Nog more than Koscheck, obviously. You know, Kosh, uh, Big Nog is a legend, and people have watched him, and they're tired of seeing him not be the great fighter that he used to be. Um, and so I get that. And Big Nog is like Koscheck in that he wants to finish his contract. He has two more fights. So after the Strew fight, he'll have one more fight, depending on how it goes. If he wants to continue pursuing the rest of his contract, um, it's up to him. And then Strew, you know, I feel like, um, certainly, you know, has a, has a lot of career left in him, but that, that is dependent on him, you know, and he'll know if that's good enough for him or not. And, uh, you know, if he makes a decision, to keep fighting it's because he feels that he's going to be able to stay healthy and that he can do it you know and if a doctor tells him hey you shouldn't fight anymore and he keeps fighting like we hear that publicly i'll be like okay yeah no i don't want to see him fight but not in that i don't want to see him fight but that i i want him to not fight in in that regard not that i don't want to see him fight if he's gonna fight i'm gonna watch him i love watching Strew fight that guy has heart the guy puts on exciting fights to say you're not gonna watch him because you know you don't want to get see him not see him get knocked out is uh, I guess in in a sense fair for uh, from a couple angles but you know it just hurts him in the end for you not to watch because he wants you to watch you know what I mean um, if he's gonna go in there the best thing you can do for him is watch you know cheer him on watch him go in there do his thing so. Those are my two cents on it, Chris. What do you think of this matchup? And, uh, uh, yeah, we spoke about this one too before. Uh, uh, who do you have winning? I think it play out. I, uh, Struve. I think uh, Big Nog is past his prime, and even though Struve has lost his last few fights, and um, actually back before we start on how I think the fight's gonna go, um, with the heart problem, if he's cleared to fight, he's cleared to fight. Yeah, you might not think it's the best idea, but it's his life. He's gonna do what he thinks is right. Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't want to play around with hard problems, but if he's going to fight, he's going to fight, and I'm going to watch him fight. That's number one. Number two, yeah, Struve has lost his last two fights, both by knockout to Mohawk Khan and Alistair Overeem, but um, he's pretty good everywhere. I mean, he has a very good ground game. He's decent on the feet. He's, my only my huge problem with him is the guy doesn't use his jab, and he's seven feet tall. That's that's just a problem in and of itself, but... um. Aside from that, the only way I see uh, Big Nog having any shot in this fight is if he looks for to get the fight to the mat and maybe finding a submission from the top. But Struve also has a good guard. Probably not good enough to submit Big Nog, but he does have a good guard. And I think if this fight takes place in the, on the feet, uh, Struve's going to come away with it. Cool. I think that's all the fights we have. This has been a good podcast. A lot of uh, topics uh, covered. A lot of uh, surprisingly, we covered three cards. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is gonna be a busy weekend in MMA, and um, you certainly shouldn't miss it. And I actually like it. The number two and three promotions are gonna go at it, and uh, in uh, ratings bid, and uh, and I um, am certainly always excited to see who wins out on that one, especially because it's a fun night of MMA. You get a lot of good fights, and. Um, Oh, holy shit. Mike Swick is returning to fight Alex Garcia at UFC 189. I didn't even know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I heard about that. I didn't hear about that. I just found out about it right now. Mike Swick. Man, when was the last time he fought? Uh, I think he got knocked out by Matt Brown. Did he fight after that? Yeah, that was at UFC on Fox 5, I believe. That was a long-ass time ago. He might have fought one more time after that. That was a long-ass time. I don't even think he did, honestly. I bet you that was the last time he fought. Let's see. That's probably it. In which case, that's been a while. That was like what, nearly two or three years ago. Yeah, Matt Brown. That was at UFC on Fox, which I know was in December, uh, and it was in December of 2012. So he's been out over two years. Yeah. 
Man, that's and before that he was out for well, I mean he took a fight and beat Demarcus Johnson, and then before that was also out another two years. So he's only yeah, wasn't he having he had uh, I forget exactly what kind of problems, but he was having health issues. Yeah, I don't re- recall exactly what the issues were. Let me see. Yeah, that's definitely what kept him out for that long though. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, I'm not too sure, but um, oh, he said it was a horrible knee injury. Yeah, I mean, he fought twice in 2012. I remember he came back, won that fight against Demarcus Johnson, then fought Matt Brown and got knocked out. But I, I, I wonder what's kept him out for so long now. It's weird. Maybe just he did, Maybe he was thinking about not fighting anymore. I mean, by the time this fight rolls around, he's going to be out for almost three years. So. Yeah, two and a half almost on the dot. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's, that's like uh, – we'll see how he does. I mean, uh, it should be interesting. Yeah, so, I think in this one I'm definitely going to be favoring Alex Garcia, though. Yeah. I had fan questions, but I don't even want to go through them. A lot of them we answered. Looking at them right now. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I think we wound up losing Jonas on the call. Did we? Yeah. No. I think. Well, for yeah. me, it's just uh, one last thing that I want to add on. You know, um, is that for me, I, I think that um, for Mike Swick, a guy that's thinking about it, should just commit. You know, I mean, what what's 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 the benefit in you know thinking that you can, you know, and thinking that you could probably fight. But you know, I mean, I I know that he's fighting guy Alex Garcia. Good for him. But like, what does that do for him? You know, what's his call after this? How old is he? He's one of these guys too that came off the Ultimate Fighter season one, just like Koscheck. And now, and you know, I thought it was just Koscheck and Diego Sanchez next. He wasn't even a thought. Yeah, I mean. I don't blame him. I mean, maybe he just, maybe he just thinks he can come back. Maybe he just took some time off after getting knocked out. Maybe he thinks he got one more left in him. We'll see how he does. If he wins, maybe he'll stick around for a little bit and commit. And if he loses, maybe he'll just stay out. Maybe he'll decide to retire. Yeah, I mean, at if, this point he's thirty-five, so I wouldn't be surprised. Thirty-five. That was about ten years ago. Yeah. I mean, uh, he started in this game pretty, pretty. Uh, Pretty strong, and about ten years ago, at least in the UFC, it's not bad. Yeah, we'll just so, see what happens. We'll see what happens. For all of our fans, I want to get a hold of us at the uh, uh, and please like our our Facebook page. That's where we put all, all our news. If you want to get a hold of us, if you want to get a hold of me specifically, uh, at Nick the Phantom on uh, on Twitter. Jonas is back. Uh, he'll say uh, any any last words you wanted to put on before we get up out of here. Oh no, man. I think we're all good. I think uh, this weekend's going to be pretty exciting to watch uh, Bellator and World Series. Get and at it. Watching uh, UFC on uh, Saturday. Yeah. Hey, get at it. Hey, April 12th as well. We are planning to have Clifford Starks on, uh, World Series of Fighting Fighter. Uh, should be very interesting to have him on. Hopefully, we'll also be getting uh, UFC fighter Michael Chiesa on. We've invited him. He said he'd be down, but he hasn't confirmed, so... That's just the word on that. Clifford Starks has confirmed, and we're excited to have him on. Um, going on, uh, yes, and that episode comes out next Sunday, April thirteenth. Get excited for it. This weekend is going to be fun. April tenth and April eleventh, two, uh, three UFC cards between the two days. Um, it's going to be great. And again, as we were saying, you can hit up uh, Chris Paliuka, Chris uh, at, uh, at Chris P A G L I U C A, and um, of course you can always hit us up at. Uh, uh, sportsofanarchy.com as well. Check out our new content. I'm going to start working a lot on getting a lot of things out and, and uh, working on a lot of new things to try and uh, make it exciting, make it interesting. And uh, if you want to reach Jonas, uh, go ahead and look. I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't know how if he's down for you to find him or not. Uh, for me, uh, from Chris, from Jonas, from MMAD, we appreciate you guys. Ryan Couture, we also want to thank him for coming on. That was a good interview, great interview we had. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, we appreciate definitely having him on. Time. Yeah, we appreciate having him on. Can't wait to have him on again. So uh, with that, guy, say goodbye. All right, guys, thanks for listening yeah. again. I do appreciate it. We're going to have – I mean, look, we're getting on guys. We're getting Ryan Couture on. Just going to – Go on from there. Mike Piesa, maybe next week. Who knows? Dennis Bermudez, maybe next week. Who knows? We have some guys coming on this. It's just going to keep growing, and we need your support in order to do that. As I say at the end of all these podcasts, it's you guys that are mattering. It's you guys that matter to help this thing grow. You want to see guests <laughs> on here? 
freaking hate you. You want to see stuff that I hate you, Nick. <laughs> he said, it's you guys that are mattering. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> okay. All right, so, uh, that's yeah, funny. basically, it's the people who listen to this podcast that are helping making things happen, and if you keep listening, share it with your friends, it's just going to keep happening. We're going to keep getting more and more guys on. We're going to have more opportunities to do fun things, so we really appreciate everyone who listens and shares the podcast. Hey, for anybody that wants, I've been getting questions still about downloading information. Um, you guys can download us for free on Stitcher and iTunes, and if you do, please write a review. Let us know what you think. Um, you know, just don't tell us anything bad about us. <laughs> um, with that being said, also I want to go ahead and give a shout out to my uh, my uncle Joe Peralta, who has his own podcast on moments of moments without reason. Uh, you can hit them up at on uh on Stitcher or iTunes. Uh, they also have their own website. I think it's moments without reason on what is it? No, it's like uh, what is it? audiobooks or something like that they have themselves on now so it's pretty cool L L lucky them they're funny they talk about a lot of random stuff and, and they're, they're, they're it's basically half that half comedy so it's uh, very interesting go ahead and give them a listen uh with that being said i think we're good yeah guys yeah all right next catch us next monday for episode 33 featuring clifford starks we appreciate you guys for listening uh love ya hit us up bye